Oh, well, hello there. Today, we're going to tie together everything you learned about limits and continuity with what you already know about slope to bring us to the quintessential topic in differential calculus. Everything you learn is going to be based on the idea of the tangent line. Now, you remember tangent lines from geometry, right? They were lines that touched a curve at one point, right? Tangent line. In calculus, we use that tangent line to tell us about the curve. So, the first thing we have to do is create the tangent line. And that's why you're here today. Let's start with a function and an x value. So let's say I've got this function here and I'm gonna start with an x value here at a. And the function here will be f of x. So far, so good. We'll do a big dot right here. Now, I'm gonna go out a little bit or let's go this way a little bit. Ah, let's go this way a little bit. And we'll call this x equals a plus h. Okay? h being eh, something. Right? But if you add h units onto there, that's going to take you out to this point here. Okay. So, so far, so good. Let's get the y coordinates of those points. Hmm, that's f of x. So when x equals a, this point will be a comma f of a. How about out here? See if you can figure out what this point will be. That's right. a plus h comma f of a plus h. Now, I'm interested in the slope. Now, what is the big deal about the slope? Well, the slope tells us about the curve, doesn't it? It tells us about the change. For example, if you drive 300 miles in four hours, you can get your average speed. Well, what have you done? You've just calculated slope. If you drive those same 300 miles in two hours, that's a different slope, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's what calculus is all about, the study of slope. So if anybody ever asks you what calculus is about, slope. So here we go. Let's go back and let's get the slope of this secant line. <gasps> yes, there's that word from geometry again. A line that connects two points on a curve is called a secant line. But let's get the slope of that red line. I hope you can see that. Well, you know that that slope, and let's call this point, sorry, we'll call this point P and Q. Okay, so, so we get all that on there. All right, so I want the slope of P, Q. Okay. So here we go. Hmm, how do we get slope? Hey, 14 year old, how do you get slope? Well, I don't know. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1? Yes, that's exactly right. Do you remember that? The change in Y over the change in X. So here we go. Let's go delta Y over delta X. So this is going to be F of A plus H minus f of a, there's y2 minus y1, and then x2, a plus h minus a. Oh, but can we simplify that denominator? Yes, we can. So it's f of a plus h minus f of a 
all over H. And this is the slope of P, Q. All right. Now, we could stop right there and just get you to understand this. And if you can understand this, you understand most of differential calculus because everything we do builds off of this idea. All right, now, here's where it gets interesting. We are going to move Q close to P. As we move Q close to P, what happens to H? Now think about that for a second. This distance right here, that's delta x, isn't it? Well, we've already just determined that that's h. So as I move q closer and closer to p, what is happening to h? Hmm. h is getting smaller. That's right. H is getting smaller, and I'm going to use some language now that you just learned. Here we go. One more statement. As Q approaches P, what does this sound like? What mathematical concept uses that word? The limit. As Q approaches P, H approaches what? Think about that for just a minute. What does H approach as Q approaches P? Let's see. Q is going along here, so that means if it moves up here, here's H is this distance, and then Q goes up here, and H is that little distance, and Q goes up here, and H is... What is happening to H? It's getting smaller and it's getting closer to, that's right, zero. And this idea is the foundation of differential calculus. Now, can we write that in math language? Hmm, I think we can. f of a plus h minus f of a over h. That's our slope, right? As q gets close to p, h gets close to zero. What kind of language is that? The limit as h approaches zero. And think about it. What happens to that red line as q gets right on top of p? What kind of line does it turn into? It goes from being a secant line to a tangent line, right? Right up there at P. And what does this become? Instead of the slope of PQ, this becomes the slope of the tangent at P. Whoa. Another way of saying at x equals a. Dude, that's it. That is your life for the entire fall term of differential calculus. You will do nothing else besides that equation in its various forms. I cannot stress this enough. You cannot begin to understand anything in calculus if you don't understand the slope of the tangent line. And if you do understand the slope of the tangent line, that opens up an entire world of mathematics and physics and understanding. This equation right here is your life.
Thank you. Watch this video maybe a hundred more times. Limit as h approaches zero, f of a plus h minus f of a over h is the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. Slope of the tangent line. That is your life.